I think for Westerners who aren't familiar with shamanism, you can think of it as pre-science, the original exploration into what's really going on. But for people who maybe aren't too familiar with just shamanic culture, shamanic arts, and, and that sort of cosmology, I mean, this is a loaded question and take it wherever you want, but how would you describe like what is shamanism then? Like how, like how does it fit into, into reality and, and uh, from your perspective? I think for Westerners who aren't familiar with shamanism, you can think of it as pre-science, the original exploration into what's really going on. And then that was a kind of pattern of investigation and knowledge and sacred keeper of knowledge and oral history and tradition, as well as healer and mystic in tribal societies. So before the age of large empires and city-state governments and things, that's just the modern world today, there were tribal societies everywhere. And those tribal societies had figures in the society that represented that keeper of knowledge and the person who had medicinal understandings and capacities to be able to share with others. And so they straddled what are now very segmented fields of specialities. But, uh, at, you know, a shaman really is a person who is part medicine man or healer, mystic in terms of the exploration of the understandings around them and the environment they live in. And then if they, uh, you know, have sacred plants, obviously a deep connection with nature and the plant consciousness and, and the life of plants themselves. And in the Amazon, I mean, it's a, it's a pharmacopoeia of plants that the shamans really know of. It's in the hundreds and hundreds of medicinal plants. If you walk with a trained shaman through the forest, every five seconds they can plant, uh, point out a plant that has a certain use or a kind of healing capacity, you know, and then, um, and then it's this, this, in the classic definition, it's this ability to go what's called between worlds. But I don't really like that definition so much. I think that's a really segmented concept of, of life. Like there are these multiple worlds. I really do think of it as one world or one universe or, or just universe. And that there are these other states of consciousness. And in the other states of consciousness, you tap into more of different expressions of reality. Like if you're scuba diving, you're in one reality. If you're, you know, on the beach, you're in another. And so, but you're still part of the same, same world. And so uh, it's, this, it's this capacity to be able to straddle, you know, multiple roles as well as uh, different states of consciousness and be able to support everybody in your group or your tribe that is um, suffering really anything. So you, you learn what would be considered different expressions of physical field medicine as well as uh, psychological healing. And when I first got to the Amazon on the psychological part, which was just mind-blowing to me, out in the jungle, the locals had no words for anxiety, depression, and stress. And uh, it wasn't even in their language. So it wasn't something that was identified and codified in linguistics at all. And then I came to realize that they didn't have those uh, concepts because the moment they would start to experience any one of those afflictions, they would immediately go to a healer and get help. And that the healer in that very primal originating state of that malaise would be able to do something to redirect that in a new form and ultimately bring healing to the person. <laughs> 